And welcome to the Urban Impact Show. It is Sunday. It's the last Sunday of March, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 26. Mm -hmm. Ooh, March 26. Man, time flies by. Well, we are live from the studio, and I still have no glasses. The number is 515-996-0326 <laughs> if you would like to rent this space. Um, shout out to Lauren Campbell. She's been amazing yeah, at amazing. Yeah, making sure that we have a space where we're able to bring you all types of information. And so, Lauren, shout out to you. Thank you. The studio is a great space. Um, you've utilized it Yeah, before. my son had his th uh, number year three pictures here. Yeah, so I we've, we've had people was, here use it before, so we're really excited for it. So today we are having a great show today. Looking forward to it. But tell me what's been going on with you, Jamal. Uh, this weekend, caught up with uh, all my laundry. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Yay! I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, what else? My boot camp's still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, what else I got going on? Work. Work, yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to work today, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's about it. That's about it, yeah. So uh, the weather's getting, I don't know. I looked at that snow yesterday. Oh, we tell had some me about big it. snowflakes this morning, yes, too. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. We did. I'm like, this Iowa, the only place where you can go two days without wearing mm -hmm. a coat. The next day, you pulling out your winter coat and putting, you know, the big hood mm -hmm. over your head. That's what I was doing this morning. Mm -hmm. Or washing your car and wishing you never. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Yes, that is definitely true. Brittany, how you doing? Good, pretty busy like always. Mm -hmm. um, just with working and you know being a mom and just trying to find some like personal time in between that, which is like I feel like this time of the year it's, it gets hard. Mm -hmm. So just have to be a little bit more creative because that could be like since I have a lot more time like in the week, it could be like going to coffee or going right. to, you know, like hang out with friends at the nail shop or just mm -hmm. like being more creative. It doesn't have to be, let's go out for a drink or let's go to dinner or whatever. Right. So. Yeah. No, that so, self-care, yeah. I had someone write that to me today talking about they don't do too much on the weekends yeah. now because it's their time for self-care. Mm -hmm. So they've identified, yeah, yeah, they've identified the weekends um, as their self-care. I'm working on taking my meetings down to two days a week. Yeah. So like I will go back Tuesdays, to Tuesdays, Thursdays, that's it. You can't yeah. book me I'm doing Mondays and Thursdays okay. for mine. So yeah. Monday and Thursday is gonna be the days now that I'll do all of my meetings, mm -hmm. go visit schools, do mm -hmm. what I need to do in those two days. But then um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday are my days to actual work. Yeah. Because what I've been doing is trying to work and do the meetings at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's I'm not getting any work yeah. done. It's, it's way too and much. you have school, yeah. then you need your self-care, so yeah. that's gonna be really good for you. Because yeah. then you can put other things those other days. So I'm trying to focus. Um, I've been listening to Pastor Mike Todd. Shout out mm -hmm. to you, Pastor Mike Todd. Um, he is with Transformation mm -hmm. Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I have been thinking about the word focus. That's mm -hmm. kind of been my word Lord gives me different words and focus. And when I went to listen to him this morning, I'm a week, two weeks behind on a series that he's mm -hmm. got going on about easy money. Mm -hmm. His phrase was master your focus. Mm -hmm. Like we all try to master different things, but he was like, M just master focusing on something. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay, then I'm gonna focus on my schedule. That's mm -hmm. the first thing that we'll focus on. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, that. you have to let me know how that goes. Yeah, I so I was gifted one of his or his relationship book with, um, yes. and it comes like a workbook too mm -hmm. or whatever, and mm -hmm. I hear really good things about it. So, well, if you want to get a hold of your finances, he has um, one too. One thing that I did when I watched um, the first uh, episode of his four week series on Easy Money mm -hmm. was as I was listening to it, he is actually paying for people to go through Dave Ramsey oh, for wow. one year. Wow. So How do you get signed up with it. Literally, listen to the sermon. I'm just telling y'all mm -hmm. go listen to his sermon. He gives you directions on how to get signed up, and mm -hmm. it works. It's a very wow. easy process. I did it this morning. Mm -hmm. um, finances is one thing I still struggle with. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of us. Yeah, the money piece, I'm not there. I'm not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm a giver, but I'm not a good steward of my finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not a saver. Yeah. And so there's just things that I really want to work on. One thing uh, me and my boyfriend are doing now is the envelope challenge. I don't know if you oh, ever heard, of, heard that. of that. So yes. we were going to we were going to do like every single day uh -huh. and like try to, we started from all even numbers from two to 200, uh -huh. they put all of them and then try to every single day put something in there. Some days, or maybe your payday is gonna be the big days where you right. do the 200s, the 184, the uh -huh. 186, and then maybe slower days, $2, $4, right. $30, $20. Right. And so we started that about a month ago 
and I had to pull back from doing every single day because that could be a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. but a lot. the the goal is to save ten thousand. So whether that's going to be in three months or two months or four months, it's still going to be effective. Right. So with both of us doing it, it's like when we're done over the, hopefully the next three to five or six months, mm-hmm. we'll have twenty thousand dollars. And it's like mm-hmm. easy, and it's like. Sometimes for me, if even if I put it in my savings, I was a person that was still transferring to my checkings, mm-hmm. going and get it out just because I see it. Like, put it in the envelope, mm-hmm. I don't really see it. And that's the envelope sealed, and I put it away. Like, yeah, I could go in and do, but it, that's like doing a lot to right. me and defeats the purpose mm-hmm. of bad. it. Yeah, you yeah. feel bad. You feel different. <laughs> you feel different from then putting, taking it out of your savings mm-hmm. account. So that's yeah. another goal to, you know, you can try to do, do the envelope challenge. There's yeah. so many different challenges with envelope challenge, but I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends in our circles are doing it. So we started it and it's been good. Yeah, that's what I heard. I also have an account that I was just telling my cousin about. I'm like, I got the savings account that I don't even have a card attached Mm -hmm. to. So what I can start doing is putting money in that account, Mm -hmm. you know, $20 here, $10 there, whatever I have, and and start taking, like, everything where Mm -hmm. my money's come from Mm -hmm. different places, but committing a percentage Mm -hmm. of, like, what I make and say, okay, you're just going to put that in the savings account. Mm -hmm. Watch that grow. So I'm going to attempt to try that. I'm going to... Listen to this, Dave Ramsey. Yeah, my sister. Look into that. Yeah, Dave Ramsey. So I, I yeah, would just he say he. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my sister is actually has done things, and I joke and make fun of her <laughs> sometimes. I'm like, you be following that thing to the T, but I guess <laughs> you have is, to yeah. you in it. order to be able to have that. What he says is a thousand dollar savings. Mm-hmm. Is you have like you should always have a thousand dollars in savings in your account. And I know a lot of times we think it's impossible, yeah. but. That actually is really possible to be able to do. And if you dip into it, I would imagine you just keep putting putting money back in there little Mm -hmm. by little to build yourself back up. That's what we said. Even when we hit the 10,000 and we're done, like even if we have to pay something or something, we're going to just take half and keep doing it. Right. So that we always have a big chunk of something, Mm -hmm. like a few thousand, you know, at a time as we're building it or whatever. So you can just always have money. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Well, we got more things to talk about (laughs) because I got to bring up uh, Jonathan Majors, but I'm not going to do that right now because I know that our time (laughs) is wrapping up and we want to get to our great guests that we have for today. So we'll hold that for our back conversation and some other hot topics um, that are going on. We'll we'll have that conversation in a little bit. So we're going to take a really quick break and we'll be right back with the Urban Impact Show.
Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show, where we have our first guest of the day. We have Miss Kenyatta Coney. Welcome, Kenyatta. Hello. To the Urban Impact Show. <laughs> Hello. It feels weird saying this, y'all, because this is really my cousin, but she's doing really great things. And I always feel like no matter who you are, family or non-family, we want to get you out there so people know about the really great work that you're doing. So uh, Kenyatta is a part of the NAACP. Mm -hmm. um, she's been a part of the NAACP for quite some time. So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do with the NAACP, and what high school you graduated from. Um, starting off high school, I went to Hoover. Mm -hmm. um, and then NAACP, I'm currently the third vice president of the adult branch. Mm -hmm. um, I joined when I was a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and I've, as a youth in college, I was Vice President, youth and state youth and college president. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So you've been heavily involved. So talk about what was the attraction to NAACP. Okay, and wait, I gotta ask you this question. Am I saying that right? Because I've been told that it's really really should be saying NAACP, and I've been calling it NAACP. So tell me which one's right, so I can correct myself right now. NAACP is the correct way. So okay. you don't get it mixed up with the basketball tournaments. Ah, oh, okay, so. I stand corrected, y'all. I apologize. NAACP, not NAACP. We've all, we've all learned because we all say NAACP. So NAACP, tell me about the attraction to that. What made you want to be a part of what they were doing? So when I first joined in high school, I was forced into it. It was, mm -hmm. uh, you just move back home. You got to be <laughs> in something. You're not going right. to be at home. So I joined. Um, and then... My first meeting, I got pushed to be secretary. Like I walked into a meeting, like, "Oh, you're mm -hmm. gonna be secretary today." Right. And then I, that's what <laughs> happened. And then um, I had a great team of advisors behind me that just right. kept pushing me and pushing me, and mm -hmm. here I am now. So can we can we give a shout out to a few of those advisors? Who are some of those advisors that pushed you into doing the work you're doing? <laughs> um, she's our current president right now, um, Victoria Henderson Weber, and mm -hmm. as well as Miss um, Gretchen Woods. So, yeah. So, I'm going to ask you this question that I know some people are going to be like, I can't believe she's asking this question, but I think it's important because a lot of times when we get into um, these things about black organizations or mm -hmm. what is perceived as black organizations in AACP, um, is the NAACP um, a racist organization? No, not at all. Okay, I asked that question. <laughs> look, some folks look at me like, Whoa, what'd she ask that for? Because what I've noticed a lot of times is when we have these things from Black Lives Matters into other organizations, they get labeled as some type of, ra well, you're, you're being racist. You're just only speaking up for this group. Oh, you won't let other people in. Now, can anyone join the NAACP? Yes, anybody can join the NAACP. It was actually started with not only black people. Okay. Y'all hear that? <laughs> Anybody, and I'm talking to a certain group of people here. So when I when I do these things and ask these questions, I'm asking them because there are groups of people out there who really do believe that you're being racist or you're you have just one agenda or I'm not welcome into your group. And what I, I'm hoping is by our conversation today is that we will encourage people, rather they look like us or not, that they will be a part of and join the NAACP. So tell me, does it cost to be a part of the organization? So normally it does, mm -hmm. but right now we are giving out free memberships so anybody can join. Um, you can go to our website, it's naacpdesmoinesorg slash memberships, and you can get a free membership for a year. NAACP.org slash membership. NAACP Des Moines. Des Moines. Oh, you got to put Des Moines because there's a whole bunch of branches all over the yes. place. So we're going to actually make sure we get that up on the Urban Impact Shows page. We're going to encourage you to go. It's a free membership, y'all. Y'all don't have to pay for it. You can be a part of it. So with that membership, do I need to be a member to come to your meetings? Do you have like open meetings to the public or is it just for those who have memberships? No, you can come. We have them. Um, matter of fact, our meeting is Tuesday um, at 6.30. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go and sign up, then you can just click the link to get the um, link for the meeting for Tuesday. Now, are your meetings virtual or in person? Zoom. Okay, so you got a Zoom meeting, y'all. So look here, you get a free membership from NAACP. You can go to their meetings on Zoom. So if you want to know what's going on, this is an opportunity to be a part of the work. Now, is there things that you all do throughout the year, any fundraising events you have? Just tell me a little bit about what the organization is doing. So we have different committees. The mm -hmm. committees do different like events. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have our Freedom Fund every year. Yeah. 
so we have the Freedom Fund, and then like it depends like what's going on around the community. We're always helping the community. Now you got a special treat this year that I just want to bring up because I thought it was pretty neat myself. Um, any of you that watch the Image Awards, right? The NAA. NAACP Image Awards, Kenyatta, you got an opportunity to actually be there live and in person, yes, didn't you? Yes, I did. How, how was that, being able to attend that event? Um, it was it was dope. Like, mm -hmm. what you guys see on TV is not at all how it's like. Like, there's extra things you don't get to see on TV, so it's really a dope experience. Right. Any stars that you met or maybe got <laughs> pictures with or anything like that? Um, so, yeah, I um, met Maggie from Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. Um, the P Valley cast. Um, I took a picture with Marce Martin. Um, so yeah, it was a lot. See some of the perks y'all get from being a part of the NAACP. You know, you get to be get to go to some of these events. Next year, uh, Image Awards yes. is in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, like the experience is like when you stay at the hotel, celebrities are in the hotel with you. I was on the elevator with Kev on stage, so it was it's dope. It's a dope experience. Wow. <laughs> I think I need to get my membership going. I know. I'm like, I got people looking around here like, I might need to join this organization. No, NAACP really does a lot of great work within our community. Now, I know you got me and specified making sure I say NAACP Des Moines mm -hmm. because we obviously must have branches across the state of Iowa. Yes, we do. Okay. So there's 30, I think. Mm -hmm. And in our conference is Iowa and Nebraska. So we pull Nebraska in with us as well. Okay, so we so we do work with both the state of Iowa and Nebraska. Yes. Now, who is our president for the Iowa Nebraska NAACP? That would be Betty Andrews. Okay, and then who was our president for the Des Moines chapter? Victoria Henderson Weber. Okay, so I'm just I'm just <laughs> trying to school people because I think we hear about the work you're doing, but we never know the people who are involved with the work that's going on with the organization, and so we want to make sure um, that people know. If you have, I'm gonna give you a few moments here to tell people why they should join and be a part of the NAACP. Okay, so um, Trey, which, which camera should I look at? This one? Um, you should join because um, there's a lot of conversations that Des Moines doesn't do anything for the black community, but you're on Facebook complaining but not getting out here and doing the work. So you should join so you can contribute to the work. All right, you know what? I love that. That was short and sweet. Look, you can't <laughs> sit here being complaining about what's going on in our city if you're not willing to be an active participant and be a part of people who are doing the work. It's very easy to criticize mm -hmm. organizations that are out there trying to do the work, but until you're in the room with them, you don't really know what's going on, so we're going to encourage you to make sure that you're a, a part of NAACP. I will have to say I was a member at one time. I think I've let that membership go, so I ain't going to be a person that's going to talk about it but be about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get my free membership go here so that, I can make sure, <laughs> so I can make sure that I'm a part of the work and the things that you are doing. Um, NAACP also sponsors quite a few organizations, mm -hmm. too, as well, don't you, mm -hmm. for just various just events. different events, yeah. If you have an event, you can always ask us to sponsor it. Okay. So, yeah. So, do y'all hear that? If you need an event sponsored, make sure you reach out to NAACP. We're going to have all of this information on the Urban Impact Show's page to make sure that you can get all the information that you need. Um, know about the banquet that will be in the fall. Their Freedom Banquet that they do every year is a really great event. So, Kenyatta, I just want to thank you so much for taking time to share a little bit about the work that you do. Um, on NAACP. Now you said you're third vice president. Yes. So does that mean at some point you will potentially become president of the organization? So I'm the baby. Okay. I'm the whole, <laughs> I'm the baby right now. Right. So um, pretty much they're just grooming me because I've been in it for so long mm -hmm. that they was like, okay, we're gonna teach you how to make your way up. As well as I did a national program with NAACP that trains me to be a board member of the national organization. So mm -hmm. they're trying to pushed me up. Okay. Well, I want y'all to encourage Kenya to continue to do the work with NAACP. I think that's really important. Someone who's been a part of the organization for quite some time, not saying this because she's family, but saying because we need to do a really better job at encouraging our young people to take on leadership roles. Like I tell folks, they're our future. Um, they're the ones that are going to be taking care of us and we need them. So we want to cultivate them. We want to kind of mold them, not to be who we want them to be, but really help them be the person that they want to be in the spaces that
that they're in. So we thank you so much for what you're doing. Looking forward to um, saying one day you'll be the president of NAACP Des Moines, and I'll get to say that I spoke to you first. <laughs> just make sure you come back again, okay? When you are officially um, the president someday, so I'm gonna just put that out there in the atmosphere. So thank you again for being on the show. We are gonna take a short break, and we'll be back with our next guest here at the Urban Impact Show. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show, and I have my guest today on the Business Spotlight. If you guys want to introduce yourselves. My name is Ariana. And I'm Lindsay. And what's your business? We have Strictly Good Eats Food Truck. Nice. So how did Strictly Good Eats start? When did you guys get started? Oh, it's been two years now. It's going on two years. Um, I've always been a cook in the mm -hmm. kitchen, but um, she ended up wanting to do um, she was doing basketball, mm -hmm. and she was doing basketball since she was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. She got a full ride scholarship to college, and the first year she said, Mom, I want to cook. I don't want to do this anymore. I said, what? <laughs> you know, I was like, no. What? You know? And so she started cooking in college. Mm -hmm. And like then. for your teammates? And yeah, my, and yeah we, be, we was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time at college, no kids don't know how to cook. I, when I was in college, I was eating macaroni cups and noodles and, and so I know your friends was like dang we getting Sunday yeah. dinner yeah we was eating good when I yeah when I came up there yes yeah, so what but school did you go to it was in a, Nebraska but it was a community college so it was only like a two-year thing so mm -hmm. yeah well I remember first meeting you guys um I think you guys had maybe like your first pop-up like a few mm -hmm. years ago and like you guys had 
like I think it was like a fettuccine or shrimp and fettuccine baked potato, and mm. I had never seen that. Yeah. And so I had ate it, and I'm, I told my boyfriend, I'm like, this potato is really good. Let me go back and get you one. <laughs> and so like, and I remember you. What was unique about you guys was that it was like only pop ups. Like so we couldn't just yeah. come every weekend yeah. and get it, which made people crave it. Yeah. You know. And then exactly. you guys started doing breakfast and started yeah. doing other things, and I think like to the point where we want, like I wanted to follow where you guys were because I knew you'd have to do the pop up. Like I couldn't go like some of the other food trucks. Right. that were every single weekend. And that's and I think that's what is authentic and that's what we don't want to give, you know, it's just like being in a good relationship. You don't want to do too much because yeah. then yeah. it gets old quick, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I think that was one of our best decisions. And plus, we still work full time. Yeah. Like, we can't just, you know, we still got bills to pay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah. And you probably, did you think that, I mean, I know you, you have strong faith, but did you think that it was going to be as big as it was? Like, people were going to jump on it like that? I knew I, I didn't think it was going to be that big, but mm -hmm. you know what made her? Mm -hmm. I was like, this girl got a lot of, she was kind of popular, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. and then she's on social media. Yeah. And I was like, I know my friend's going to come and eat because yeah. they have our food. But the support that she gets in the younger community yeah. is ridiculous. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of businesses is about marketing yourself the right way. Mm -hmm. the younger like the younger kids know how to market themselves really well. Oh, yeah. You know, most of the times when we do come to your trucks or whatever, it's always a long line. It's always, you know, people waiting mm -hmm. um, for it because it's that good. Yes, you um, know? thank you. <laughs> um, have you guys thought about opening up a restaurant or you think you're just going to keep the trucks? We've been thinking about another business, but, yeah, we don't know where to go yet. So we could yeah. just honestly... Well, I think you guys have a pretty good menu, I'm, and I know that, you know, with the spring and summer coming up, we'll probably see you guys a lot more. Oh, yes. yeah. Do you think you'll just still continue to do the pop-up aspect, or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have probably pop more. up more, yeah. but yeah. now that we are getting booked for catering and yeah, events, it's like we can't, like last year, we only was able to do maybe four pop-ups. Mm -hmm because of our event schedules. Like That's we had so many, yes, yes. We'd yes. rather get booked. Oh yes, booked and busy, yep. no. <laughs> yes, so yeah. yeah. No, and I think that that's <laughs> awesome that as a mom, because a lot of it, like I was a student athlete and I didn't have a choice. I was going to college okay. and I was doing, cause that was how I, I got a scholarship and track to go to college. And you know, I even, I think my junior year, I didn't even want to run no more, but that was paying for my school, so I had yeah. to. Yeah. So that was big of you as a mom to mm -hmm. say, hey, let's focus on what you're passionate about. A lot of people don't have that opportunity, so. Yeah. I know you are happy that your mom allowed you yeah, to do that. I'm really thankful that she let me like decide where I wanted to go. So yeah. Okay. What do you feel is next for? I know you have several other businesses, but what's next for the food truck? We're looking into we're looking into like maybe possibly um, going a little bigger, mm -hmm. um, doing a commercial kitchen. Oh, nice! But for other people that are interested in the food, whether it's healthy, mm -hmm. whether it's unhealthy like ours, but um, <laughs> rather it's in those areas, but give them that are doing food trucks and want to cater and just yeah. able to use our kitchen and you know space like that. And we can still have that also. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're looking into, you know, on top of still doing pop-ups, mm -hmm. like maybe even out if we get the commercial kitchen, we're looking at doing it out there because mm -hmm. you can do both out there. But it's just a lot of things we're trying to balance yeah. well I would say that I know a lot of people who like cook out of their homes and have or have tried the you know the food truck and it's not successful exactly. what do you think separates you guys like what do you feel like you're doing or staying true to to where you guys are still able to keep your food truck customer service yeah. and quality yeah and you might wait a little while yeah, but we're waiting <laughs> because it's good consistent. yeah we're yeah, waiting because know. it's good and you guys are busy exactly yeah. and like she said, staying consistent, mm -hmm. you know, like, and then, of course, followers. You yeah. treat your people right, yeah. they come back. Mm -hmm. She has, like I said, we have over, I don't know how many, just on our Strictly Good Eats mm -hmm. Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So when we pop that out, that's why we sell out so yeah, quick. Cause cause people they're and ready. I think, I know with me, I think people, they, we wait for you guys. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like, we wait for you guys, too. I know Drake Reese's, Ray Relays is coming, oh, and yeah, so we know you guys are going to be like, out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Or things are going. I think I even came to, like, a park you guys were at. I think it was, like, a private event. At East High School? No, this was, like, probably a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. It was, like, I can't remember. It was, I want to say, it might have been a company, and you guys pulled up there yeah, yeah. and then other people were able to come but you know i, I think it's awesome with, that you do this with your children because i see your other children Definitely. in the food truck and you guys are doing it as a family thing and you're teaching them how to be business oh, yeah. owners and do things the like right you, way 
you can't be a boss if you never did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And I tell them, I'm like, this isn't going to be the end. This is the beginning for you guys. But generational wealth to me is humbleness. And people think it's all about money. But they, you got to work hard. You know, it's humbleness. It's having respect for others. You yeah, know. Keeping God first. Yes, mm -hmm. putting God first. <laughs> tell, and Tell the viewers the other businesses that you guys do as well. Um, I have a daycare. We have so a So that's care. during the daytime. Yep. Is, is that your main business? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what got. Strictly for kids. <laughs> that's yeah. strictly for kids. <laughs> yeah. And I even want to excel that, too. Yeah. That's another thing. Um, but that's in the works. Where does the name come from? Um, I had my brother-in-law at the time. And we were just thinking of names. I'm like, at first, when I first started the business, I was more just like, daycare mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it wasn't now I just got more older I got I got more professional mm -hmm. and I wanted to get more professional on all ends mm -hmm. and so that's when we came up with the name and do you do you still have the Airbnb too yeah yeah so you guys mm -hmm. got you guys yeah. doing a lot of here. <laughs> yes and I, I like that you know you're young but you're not afraid to yeah. you know jump right in with your mom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well she shows me more well yeah I honestly she like like I don't know how to explain it, but she like shows me more that I can do more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just be following and after her. I think a lot of our kids, like, <coughs> I even say with my son, like if it's like a passion of yours or a drop, like everybody, college is not for everybody. Yeah. I'll keep it real. My first few years of college, like I had a culture shock for one and like I was sheltered. So I was just trying to have fun. Like I would do right. as, much, as much as I could to get my grades done, you know, and still do my sport and stuff. But until I got my master's, I feel like I didn't take school as serious, you know, and I feel like college is not for everybody. You don't have to take that. So why not teach your daughter how to do a business and start her own business so that she can, yeah. you know, be rich that way instead oh, of working for somebody else in a job she don't want to do. Yeah, I just bought her a little turntable cook thing. So that's next. Hopefully nice. we'll do a little YouTube with uh -huh. the, you know, so. Yeah. Like a cooking, like do a yeah. cooking class. That's yeah, dope. Like like TikTok being. or yeah, because mm -hmm. TikTok is getting big, so yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, where do we follow? Uh, <laughs> I don't know yet because I don't know if I want to do my page or do a, like a business one. So yeah, yeah, business page. Yeah. This guy who worked at my one of my old jobs, he quit our where we were working at because he was getting big on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And some of the old, older bosses couldn't understand, like, why would he keep And I'm like, this is the wave of the future yeah. for the kids. Yeah. Like, if they can do this instead of sitting at, behind a desk nine to five, let them do it because then they're really being truly who they are. So oh, yeah. I would say that that's awesome that you're doing that. Where can our viewers um, find you guys? Uh, Strictly Good Eats on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Strictly Good Eats. On Snapchat, too. On Snapchat, too, right? Mm -hmm. Is it Eats or Eat? I think it's on, e. Yeah, on Snapchat it's E because somebody already had it, but yeah. <laughs> but when yeah. is the next pop up? Drake Relays weekend. Okay. What weekend is that again? I think it's the oh, oh, last six. weekend. Yep, the yeah. last yeah. weekend of April, yeah. April 29th, I think it is. Yep, on 6th Ave behind the North Library. No, 26th, and I think it's 26th, 27th. I mean, yeah. <laughs> And what's the menu going to be? I don't know yet. <laughs> you got to wait. You got to wait. <laughs> but we won't know. It's either, you know, we go with the flow. Yeah. Hopefully. It's always usually the stuff I like. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies, so much for coming on and thank talking you. about nice. your business. Thank you so um, much. We will take a break, and we'll be right back with our next guest. Thank you.
What's up, y'all? We are back with the Urban Impact Show. Um, if I were to be perfectly honest, um, I can't wait to have a vacation. I need a vacation. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. my God. Me too. Especially now it's getting nice. Yeah, somewhere hot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just need a break to reset. You know, so you need a break to reset. Uh, current news right now. Uh, the Mr. Wanda, who um, caught, let me see, had a terrorist um, charge. He is, his uh, sentence got uh, commuted, so he will be getting out eventually. Wait, uh, who was this? Uh, Hotel Rwanda. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, the real guy. The real guy. Oh, the, the real, real guy. guy. Yeah, okay. the real guy. The real yeah. guy. Yeah. Okay. So he got 25 years. Yeah, yeah. So 25 years, and uh, it got commuted, so he will be getting out eventually. So, oh, so wow. I've seen in the news, this is crazy. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, because it's, it's making its way. So Saturday morning this couple in mississippi this um the wife was arguing with the husband and she went on live but she was somebody who was all she goes on live just all the time so she's somebody who's always on live she went on live she's arguing with him there was like cheating allegations so she's like talking about this all through live long story short she shoots him he dies on live the police mm. come the emt comes everything oh. and the phone is still on live oh. so nobody realizes this so pretty much the police know like she's Solved her own murder, like the murder herself, mm -hmm. because all they have to now the video is posted on Facebook oh and now it's on Snapchat, like everywhere, mm -hmm. TikTok. Wow. But you know how usually they have to like do all the she videoed the whole thing. Only thing that you want that you hadn't see, you don't see it happen, but you've seen them talking and arguing at first. Then you hear her shoot the gun. And she says that she didn't know that there was a bullet in the chamber. She's like, oh, my God, I'm going to jail. Oh, my God, he's dying. The kids are like crying. Her mom like it's crazy. And she had it all on Facebook Live. Wow. That is crazy. Yep. And they have been together, I want to say, since junior high school or something like that. Wow. Yeah, young that, black couple. That's. Yeah, it was horrible. That's crazy. And I think the most, more so for the children, because uh -huh. for one, they had to witness their dad, because it was a, a long, like, few minutes between when the EMTs and everybody came, but he was gone by then. Mm -hmm. And I, like, you can hear him say, I love you, I think, oh. to the kids or something like that. But yeah, it was horrible. That is terrible. Yeah. So but that. I'm being honest. Sometimes we don't have to put everything. Like we record everything, everything. now. Yeah. Like everybody wants to see what's going on, and you want to embarrass him. That yeah. And she had just had a baby too, so like I'm just looking through the comments. People were saying like, you know, it sounds like she was going through postpartum, yeah, she and, did. but. Unfortunately, there ain't gonna. She felt the whole thing. There ain't gonna be nothing. No jury's gonna be like, oh, we're gonna take in consideration, like, because she shot him in the back of the head, oh, no. you know. And but you could hear her say, like, she did not realize, but it's like, why'd you even pick? That's why you don't play with guns mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, you really don't. So yeah, that you was. Don't. You really it's, don't. It'll be interesting to see how this. All, they have four children. How this all unfolds because. Oh. That's. You know, that's just terrible. Well, I'm going to add to this if, I, if I'm being honest. I need y'all to stop putting all y'all's family business on yeah. Facebook, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to tell y'all right yeah. now. If I'm, if yeah, I'm yeah. just telling you right now. That stuff lasts forever, mm -hmm. and I got family members that do it too, so I ain't telling y'all yeah. this. I'm talking to my own family right. too. Like, we don't need to know all y'all's business. Like, it's, it's embarrassing to put your stuff out mm -hmm. there. Knowing good and well, you're going to talk to the people the next day anyway. Yeah. Like, all this stuff you're going back and forth for. We got enough going on in the world. I don't need to know your business. Everybody else yeah. don't need to know your business. Keep your business between yourself. But yeah. I am telling you, um, but if you put it on there, I'm going to read it. You want to know why? Because I'm nosy, right. okay? Gonna so I'm going to go it. through and I'm going to scroll don't through and read it. it. But right. don't put it out there for me, okay? I don't need the temptation. Well, here's, my, here's my thing, too. When you put it out there, then we all get back together. Then you don't want people to ask. I want to know what happened. Exactly. What, what, what? Like, what else? You don't right. put it on there, then. Exactly. No, I'm just, I and I've, I've seen this a few times, and I'm just like, why are y'all putting it out there for everyone? Like, y'all can't have a conversation with each other behind closed doors or go out to eat, do something, but yeah. don't put all that stuff out there. It's not for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. um, you know, social media has just turned into this, it's everybody's business type I have thing. I read something they're saying, like, in some state, they're trying to ban social media Utah. from kids. Yeah, at, at some point, like, to, at some capacity. They're going to have for a curfew. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I agree, because, like, my, my son is addicted to social right. media. You know what I mean? Like, we all are. I'm addicted to social media. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I 
I wouldn't mind them trying to do something like that for kids, to be honest. Yeah, Apple told me my screen time was down 13%. Wait, so I'm, but I'm isn't happy that, about that. But I'm sometimes, like, that. to even see that, you're like, how am I getting anything done uh, when... Well, you don't. You don't. I was like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm too busy just going through Yeah, it's addicting. It's like something that's, through. like, connecting us to the phone. If I lose my phone... Like, my whole day is just, like, I will stop anything I'm doing. Yeah. Like, if you lose, <laughs> yes, if I lose my phone. Mm -hmm. But it didn't used to be like that, like, no, back in the day. It didn't used to be. Well, can I add one more thing to this, if I'm being honest? Why is um, the federal government wasting our time trying to figure out TikTok? Like, I just need them to really stop right Focus now. Focus like, on something yes, else. Yes, I'm sitting here like, we live in a nation where if I, I might be off on this, but I think I'm right. We are the worst place for homelessness. We have issues within yeah. our own home that we need to tackle. But instead, we're sitting here having hours long conversation mm -hmm. about if TikTok is connected to Chinese. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I don't care about all of that. We've got bigger problems and I feel like a lot of times we're 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 showboating mm -hmm. a lot of things for the sake of yeah. saying, well, we've got to do something. If y'all ain't got if y'all got the time to do that, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I need and I'm questioning if you should be in that seat. Like if yeah. we're really taking time. And maybe there's more to this, I don't know, and I'll admit that. But from what it just looks like from the outsider looking in or what I see on TV, it just seems like a waste of time. We just have bigger issues in the United States. We've got trillions of dollars in debt that we're in. We've got um, people who can't get jobs. We've got homelessness. We've got all kinds of issues within the United States that, you know, great. This is the place where people want to come because of freedom. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But like, we got to do a little bit yeah. better. Mm -hmm. the focus on other things. Education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Education, definitely. You know, the the CEO TikTok or what, he doesn't even let his kids like have TikTok uh -huh. or use TikTok. So I'm like, how are you selling this to other people? You don't even let your children. But here's the thing, though. We've gotten away from parents being parents. Mm -hmm. Here, here's that. the thing. So I'm not mad at him for not letting his kids use no. TikTok because he knows what's on there. And he's yeah. saying, as as the person who's responsible for you all, yeah. I'm not allowing you to, to be a part yeah. of this. And I think the problem becomes we as parents, I mean, I'm guilty as well. We're not really monitoring all the time what our kids are looking at and what they're doing. This is what we do. Go sit down. Yeah, but we want to tell people, but we want to make laws that give parents more rights. But you never took you. We shouldn't need that need in the legislature to make rights for us. Right. We're parents. You yeah. should. And, I mean, you should know how to do this or figure out how to do this. Um, but it's just bothering me that we're making these laws, I think, even with our own legislature now about giving parents more rights to come in schools. You are always welcome in schools. Mm -hmm. You choose not to show up, you know, to see how your child is doing in school. So all of these things, banning books, you shouldn't have to make laws to ban books because if parents, I'm going to say this and y'all are going to say, oh, you know, this is not right. But if parents are being parents, if you're watching what your kids are doing or having conversations with them, mm -hmm. there are things that my kids have read or seen over the years, but we talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't ban things yeah. from my kids too much, but I do have conversations with them. Hey, I'm not going to let you watch this because mm -hmm. you're just not ready for yeah. this yet. And this is why. OK, yeah, now you can watch that. Yes, you can read that. But I don't need the government to to create laws to teach me yeah. how to parent. Mm -hmm. We just need to do what we need to do yeah. and have honest conversations with our kids. But when we tell them they can't have something, what they gonna do, because I did it. Sneak. Yeah, they're gonna mm -hmm. figure it out. They're gonna mm -hmm. sneak and figure it out. So I just think we just gotta get back to the, the ways of parenting and the way it used to be. We've lost that and we've lost it to social media. We've lost it to family time. Yeah, family time, other enticing things. I mean, I'm guilty. We don't even sit at the table and eat as a family anymore, you know? And I know my son every once in a while will be like, it'd just be nice to come home and we all sit at yeah. the table because we've let the busyness of life mm -hmm. just, I don't know, take over. So, I agree. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back um, with the Urban Impact Show.
Welcome back to Urban Impact Show, where, man, every week I feel like the hour just starts to go by <laughs> so fast. But we had really um, great guests today. But I have to bring this up because I've been holding off on it the whole time. So I was so sad to see the news story uh, this morning. Jonathan Majors allegedly um, that there was some domestic violence going on. I'm seeing some news reports that it could be recanted. I've, I've also heard that maybe the Army pulled the commercial. I think the biggest thing for me, and and I'm, I, I can appreciate everything here because I've worked in a domestic violence shelter with women who have experienced domestic violence. So I no way condone that um, in any way, shape, or form. But I've also been on the other side of things where we accuse someone of mm -hmm. something and we react mm -hmm. immediately. Right away, um, yeah. The new story comes out, people were already like reacting. There was reports that the Army pulled the commercial already. There were reports that, you know, like, there's this huge response about this man and his and his um, supposedly girlfriend. That's what the reports are saying. But I think I feel bad for all parties involved um, because you've got an individual who it just seems like when people get to the peak of something, you know, he's something yeah. yeah. Then it's like something happens and it's like, what is this? But I also say that people. Calm down. Mm -hmm. We don't have to react to things so quickly to where we X a person out and then we can find out later it was a lie. Now here's the thing. If she recanted her story, then you're going to have people who are going to say, because I've worked in the domestic violence world, that maybe she was pressured into doing so and maybe there is a cycle of violence going on. We, here's the thing. We'll never know the story mm -hmm. of what really happened mm -hmm. and, and how it went down. So this is a time where I feel bad for all parties involved. Hope it's not true, but even if it's true, I'm not gonna cancel Jonathan Majors. No. I mean, we are so quick. We're Our cancel culture is so strong. I think yeah. that that's why, too, it's important to have good people around you, too. Mm -hmm. Not saying, like, nobody deserves to be hit or, or whatever's going on, but, like, you told us that he did it, if this is true, then you came back and said it, but so now it's like you've already started this like thing for him, so there's already gonna, Somewhat, he's gonna lose some money, some mm -hmm. acting job, some different things. Right. It's like, whatever happened, y'all could have kept that in house. Yeah. In because house. now you recanted, I'm sure she's gonna go back to him. Right. What you think? And I was saying, and how did the story even come up? I mean, so there had to be something that happened, maybe, you know? Yeah, there was an altercation that happened. Um, and, and is this old or new? No, this is new. This okay. was like literally, if I remember, it, it may have happened in a taxi cab maybe mm -hmm. I want to be careful what I say because I'm not the news reporter mm -hmm. I'm just going off of things as you all are I'm scrolling and reading and just kind of getting that but it looks like there could have potentially been a witness to okay. this because um, it sounded like it happened in a in a taxi cab very this is very recent so I know that a lot of the major news outlets this morning were because I was sitting at home and I told my daughter I said no not you know you always feel bad for people because you're just like I don't know what it's like to be famous, yeah. but I'd have to imagine, everybody's you know, watching. yeah, everybody's watching you. It. And it's not really a fair thing because, yeah. you know, people will say, well, they signed up for this. But no, they signed up to do their job. Yeah. This and is their job. Yeah. It just happened to be that they're famous and put on this bigger stage. Yep. And I, I always say this, I would rather be rich so that, you know, like you have you can do whatever you want or pay mm -hmm. for it, whatever. But I don't want to be famous because I've had people be in my business before where it's like, we. I just have natural life happening right. and people are judging that. Right. I would hate to be famous and you got you can't even go to the grocery store with a bonnet on mm -hmm. and some sweats where they're like, oh, look at her. Look, look yeah. how she looks without makeup or look what like that. That's that has to be like a hard job to have. Yeah. People are probably waiting to see you fall too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they are. And, people, and here's the thing I always tell people. Do not forget from whence you came. Because yeah. mm -hmm. there is not a perfect person in this no. world. And I, all I can say is thank God y'all didn't have technology back when I was younger. So there's a lot okay. of things okay. I would be in trouble for. Yeah. So I have to say God knew when technology needed to happen. All these things when I was in college. Yeah. Because I was not the same Brittany in college. No. <laughs> so. Believe me, I ain't the same one. So I know what you're saying. I always, I always tell, I joke with folks. I said, oh, I'm so glad we didn't have them videos mm -hmm. back then. 
then Kenyatta's laughing because she already know I was a hot mess, y'all. And so I just but being a mom, <laughs> but being a mom grew you up and matured you. That's what happened to no, me. No, it did. It forces you yeah. into needing to because you yeah. realize you're res- someone you're mm-hmm. responsible it's for so lives. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I just say that like we need to be careful how cr- critical right. we are of people. And I'm not saying he did it. Or he yeah, didn't. I'm not saying he did it. Didn't. I'm not saying you're you're condoning domestic yeah. violence if you stand by him or not. I'm not here to do it's all of that. Your business. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying that we have to remember to give people a measure of grace. Mm -hmm. And this probably comes from how I identify as being a Christian is that I believe God gives me grace every day that I wake Mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I believe that we should give people the same amount of grace. Mm -hmm. And 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 forgive people too. And second chances. Mm -hmm. So if he did everything that they're allegedly saying he did, Mm -hmm. then what stops us from giving him a second Mm -hmm. chance? And I just feel like I serve a God that's of and second you know chances. What it so sucks we should. Too, as we're closing, one thing I just thought about it sucks when something happens, everyone's like, ooh, ooh, what like videoing people. And it's like, if someone died or got shot or fought, why do y'all do this at first thing y'all do that's this? That's I say. Leave that, camp, leave that phone down. Like, that is mm-hmm. crazy. Like, people can't even, things, real things can't even happen to with people if, instead of people wanting to film it. Right. So they can send it somewhere, so they can say that they have first footage or they yeah. can, you know, like, to get followers. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So the person who's seen them, that's what they did. Yeah, it's right just... Away, off of an argument. Could it, have been. It got, yeah. and I'm sure the police, yeah, the police were called wherever it happened. Somehow you 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 drew the attention, He's you know, big. to, yeah, I mean, you're <laughs> seeing who this is. I mean, you know, there's people, there's so many motives. Mm-hmm. I call them, you know, you're really just nasty and mean motives that sometimes people utilize. But at the end of the day, you know, our best wishes are with yeah. all involved because it's, it's not a good situation no matter what. You can keep listening to the latest reports to see what's going on and to see who... How this all plays out, but again, we just have to learn to be a little nicer, a little forgiving. Yeah, and give grace. I mean, we definitely have to do it. So, any final thoughts, Jamal, before we wrap up the show? Um, No, um, just uh, hope you guys have a great week. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Um, And do something different. Yeah. Something towards your goals, I should say. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep, I just want to say everybody have a great week, and I like that. I might have to tell myself that same thing. Mm-hmm. Do something different. Push myself to do something different mm-hmm. this week. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. It's been a great show. Uh, we want everyone to have a great week. Again, if you'd like to support the Urban Impact Show, we would love for you to be able to pour into the work that we're doing. I just sat back and thought, like, we're three months into the year, and we're Crazy. at the last <laughs> Sunday um, in March, and we're going to be fast approaching on April and um, the weather's going to get nicer and things are going to get turning. But I do like what you said, Jamal, about like do something different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Focus on something. Master something that you've done. Take a leap of faith. You know, you might be out there knowing that you're supposed to do something that you're supposed to do, but you keep giving excuses. Take a leap of faith and do it. I speak from experience. Um, it could work. And hey, if y'all need some Girl Scout cookies, go out there, there and is. buy them. I think today's the last day. I love my Girl Scouts. I'm a former Girl Scout. Um, the winningest selling cookie Girl Scout here. But, you know, <laughs> we can, we'll save that for another day. But, um, no, we just want y'all to have a great week. We'll see you next week. We will have really great um, guests. Go out there and bless someone. Be nice to someone and give people grace. We will see you next week on the Urban Impact Show. Have a good week, everybody.